One of the most common things that you will see Linux users customize is going to be the prompt that appears whenever they are at a login shell, such as here on this terminal emulator. Now this prompt, as you probably know, is stored in a variable called PS1. And PS1 is the default variable that holds the string that represents the text that is displayed as your prompt here. Now you can put any string of text into PS1 and it will change your prompt. But you've probably noticed that there's lots of other customization options for PS1 as well, such as changing the color of the text or displaying your current directory, for instance, or any of various other things that you can add to the prompt. And in this video, I wanted to discuss a little bit about bash escape sequences and how you can use these to put things like decorative colors and useful variables into your PS1 prompt. Now you can see from my prompt here that I have lots of customization options. And in fact, we can take a look at the raw PS1 variable by simply echoing PS1 in this environment to see what it looks like. And as you can see, it's this big ghastly string of abstract looking stuff that on the surface seems quite difficult to understand. But really, it's all very simple. All of these things that you're seeing here, for the most part, are going to be non-printing characters that are meaningful to Bash because they are what it's called escape sequences. Now, escape sequences are just a kind of text information that, instead of being intended to be printed, is intended to be interpreted by something like a shell. In Bash, escape sequences begin with this slash and then 033, which represents the ANSI escape character. Now, before we continue on, I should probably mention that most of the time you don't set PS1 inside your session manually. Usually you will include it in a dot file somewhere in your user directory. The typical place to do this is either going to be in the dot profile file or the dot bash rc file. Now I believe that you will only have either one or the other of these files. If you have a dot bash rc file, it would overwrite anything that you put in a dot profile file and that wouldn't actually be read by bash when you run it. I have a .bashrc file, so if I were to go ahead and vim .bashrc, you can see that I have my PS1 set in this file here. So when you want to actually make customizations to your PS1, this is generally where you would do it, with a line that reads export PS1, followed by equals, followed by the string that you want your PS1 prompt to be. But now let's get on to the business of actually customizing the PS1 prompt. You can set it in your running environment here also with the export command. So I could do something like export PS1 equals and then some other string like hello. And if I run that, you see that my prompt has been changed to hello. If I open a new line, it's going to say this. I can type in a command here like this. And that's what my new prompt says. Now obviously that's not a very useful prompt. So if I want to retrieve the old PS1 that I had described in my bash RC file, I can simply source the file that it comes from, in this case, bash RC, and you can see that it changes back my prompt to what it was originally. So let's play around with this a bit. I mentioned that the way that you add things like colors and changing variables to the bash prompt is with escape sequences. And generally speaking, there are two kinds of escape sequences that you will use for PS1. There are several escape sequences that are specifically intended for PS1 and that are represented by an escaped character, so a backslash followed by a single character, such as backslash L. But then there are also non-printing escape sequences that are actually a series of characters and they begin with a backslash 033, which is the ANSI code for escape. Now I'll talk about these 033 escape sequences in a minute. To begin with, I actually want to talk just about the simplest sequences that are backslash followed by a character. These shortest sequences typically will display some changeable value into your prompt. For instance, the slash L here will display, when it's included in PS1, the current TTY device that this particular running shell is using. Another common one is dash U, which will display your username or dash W, which will display the current working directory. Now there are many of these single character sequences that you can use in your bash prompt, and there are lists that you can find online that will showcase them. I have this list here that I found, and I will link this website in the description. And it lists off several different ones of these single character sequences that you can include into your bash prompt to cause various things to be displayed that might be useful. Now the other type of sequence that I wanna talk about are going to be proper escape sequences, which are begun by either backslash E or more commonly backslash 033. Now I mentioned before that this is the ANSI escape character. What these sequences do is they communicate some kind of information to Bash 
that will allow it to do something in a non-printing way. And the most common thing that you do with these escape sequences is to change colors. A color changing escape sequence for Bash will look something like this backslash 033 followed by an open square bracket and then in the typical format two numbers such as say 32 and an M. This is what a typical color changing control sequence looks like as you would use it in a bash prompt and we can see what this looks like by doing something like echoing with the dash E option this and some text immediately following it such as hello and you can see that this text appears as green whereas if I just echo hello without that escape sequence it's just going to appear in the standard white which is the default text color for my terminal. Now one thing that I should mention and I'll go ahead and show you my actual PS1 prompt again to illustrate this. One thing that, that is important to keep in mind is that when you want to do these control sequences that begin with the escape character and print some color in your actual PS1 prompt wherever you permanently define it you'll want to surround any of these statements with these escaped square brackets. This escaped open square bracket and escaped closed square bracket. The escaped open square bracket and escaped closed square bracket are intended to surround sequences of non-printing characters such as escape sequences to show where the non-printing sequence begins and ends. If you don't surround your escape sequences with these characters in your bash prompt, you will probably end up with weird issues such as your text being the wrong color as you type it in or even things like text being displayed in the wrong place or the screen not clearing properly or your cursor appearing in wrong columns or various other issues. So it's important to remember to always surround these escape sequences with the opening and closing escape square brackets. Now you don't have to surround things like the single character escape strings that represent things like your username that I mentioned a moment ago. Those can just simply be put raw into your bash prompt and they will work just fine. But for all those ones that begin with the escape character, definitely always surround them with the escape square brackets. Now before I go, I wanted to show this list of color codes that can be used in a bash prompt. Um, this is just a partial list, but uh, it's from the same website that I mentioned earlier that had the information about the single character escaped arguments. And I'll also link this below in the description of the video. And you can check it out here to see some of the common colors that will be used on the 816 color terminal. And below there are even lots more than that. There are a lot of different colors that you can use in your bash prompt if you're using a 256 color terminal, that is. And this website has some information on using those color codes in your PS1 prompt. And it even has some information for using these more fine grain color codes, which have a slightly different syntax that's like RGB, rather than the numbers in an M character, which are used for the preset colors in a 16 color terminal. So yeah, definitely check this out. Um, I think that will about do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this gave you some information on how you can customize the bash prompts that you use. Um, the syntax for this stuff certainly seems kind of daunting. The first time you look at it, it just looks like a bunch of gibberish. But it's pretty easy to parse out once you know what you're looking for. And you can end up making pretty complex and good looking PS1 prompts with just a very little bit of practice once you know all these things. But uh, anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.